Tartan Steel Masters 2024 continues to amaze, thrill and baffle. Some of the results in round nine were just really random. The games were random too. Um, this was just extraordinary and quite baffling, actually, a lot of the games. But the game I've selected to look at is actually really elegant. Wei Yi against Yanni Pomnishi. Wei Yi is white. Neither player really blazing a trail in the tournament so far. Um, but they're also not doing badly. Now, bishop c4, the bishop's opening from Wei Yi. Why this one? Well, I think this is basically an anti-Petrov line. So Nepo has been playing the Petrov pretty consistently. Um, knows it extremely well. Of course, he played it against Carlsen in their World Championship match. So his preparation is very good. So this is a sliced serve, you could say. And of course, the bishop's opening isn't bad. It's not going to set the world on fire, but it's pretty solid. Certainly not bad. And often it transposes perhaps to a Jocko Piano after knight f3, sometimes to a Vienna as well. Depends how black plays. But Nepo decides to play it in the kind of pure bishop's opening way, exploiting the fact that the knight hasn't gone to c6, so he's able to play c6 and d5. Knight f3 and d5, pushing the bishop back. Now, don't take here, because then knight g5 happens. But bishop b4 check, this is standard. So basically what black is doing is, you know, you want to take this square away from the knight. That's why the, the check is played. But bishop d2 is the normal continuation. And it's a very stable position for both sides, actually. a5 threatens to play a4. A few years ago, we saw a fantastic game between Carlsen and Caruana from Norway Chess 2018, where Carlsen played c3 here. He won beautiful strategic game but anyway Wei Yi played a4 just solidly blocking the a pawn. 97 very stable position for both sides. White has some pressure on the center but you know black is very solid is able to to protect these these pawns here. Black's only problem really is how do you bring that bishop on c8 into the game? So, so that's the issue. You know, it, it almost looks like a reverse Spanish where you know you want to you want to play knight f8 to g6 and you know then everything will be fine. But of course, because of the pressure here, you can't do that. In any case, uh, Wei Yi decides to strike in the center and exchange here. So that's very direct pressure against these pawns. It means you know neither knight can move. Now this is an interesting idea, knight b1. So because the, the a pawns have advanced, that means that the b5 square is a little bit weaker. Well, it's been weakened, it's available for a piece. b6, so that brings the bishop into play. And knight c3, so that's the idea of spinning this knight round. Tax this pawn, and knight b5. So, nice little manoeuvre, but in getting the knight there, of course, white has allowed black to kind of stabilise those pawns. So, has it been worth it? The knight wants to hop in here, so that's why queen b8 was played. By Nepo, which also supports the e-pawn. If black had time, it would be very nice to spin this knight somewhere, maybe to c5, maybe back to f8 and round here. So that's why Wei Yi strikes. I think if you if you give up your center pawn like this, 
then you've got to have a good reason for it. Um, you know, you can't just allow black to claim that center. So d4, good move, striking in the middle. Now, black certainly doesn't want to take here, and, you know, there'd, there'd be a nice exchange, and you could blockade in the middle. So e4 maintains the, 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 the slight space advantage. And the knight drops back to d2. So this is, you know, a nice pawn formation, but there are downsides to it as well. It's nice to have the space, but this bishop is rather blocked in. And you have to look at black's pieces. So, you know, where is that knight going? It's really poorly placed, actually. If black could get away with knight f8, that might be quite nice. I mean, after knight f... I mean, that's the, the first move that I would think of playing to bring this knight to simply to a better square. But you have to reckon with either c4, attacking the center, or f3. I'm not sure which is better, but that's what Nepo would have been thinking of. And instead he played bishop c6 to, to yeah, get rid of that, that knight. That knight is annoying. You know, it sort of rather dominates the queen. And c4, again, there was an option to play f3, but c4, very logical to break down <clears throat> this pawn on d5 and bring this bishop into the game. You know, that's the weak square, f7. Nepo exchanged and played the queen to f4. <clears throat> so in that way, he's managed to connect his rooks. But g3 hits the queen back and c takes d5 so wei yi has definitely achieved something over the, those last few moves it's not possible to recapture the pawn why not okay you have a think why is this a big mistake what does white play now White plays g4. Black's queen needs to maintain protection of the knight. If it goes back here, then that's absolutely dreadful. There's too much, too much going on here. And if g5, then you can deflect the queen away and take a piece. So Nepo has to live with this pawn here for the time being and plays rook d8. In fact, my computer thinks that black is still just about okay after h5 with some counterplay here, but I don't know, it still, it still looks rather nice for white to me. You know, sometimes there's possibilities to spin this knight around here, um, sometimes f3, sometimes maybe bishop c2 to attack this one. In any case, rook d8 played, and f3. Now, if that pawn advances, then knight c4 is a good move, looking at uh, lots of nice sensitive spots. So, Nepo exchanged on f3. And that endgame is obviously very pleasant for white. White's a pawn up. You know, there, there could be possibilities to leap in here, or, or perhaps get the rook into c6. So I think it's understandable that Nepo played queen g5, but actually it's worse. It's worse than the endgame. It's not, not nice to suffer in an endgame, but this is worse. Knight c4. Of course, Nepo wants to, you know, keep the position complex. No, now he played h5. I mean, this is improvisation it's quite clear that things have gone very badly wrong. But he's hoping that, you know, he can stir up something with, with this, maybe. But d6 is really nice. Opens up the diagonal for the bishop. And, well, there's plenty of nice things going on with this pawn. 
White wants to play rook e7, of course. Just using that, that point on e7, protected by the pawn. King f8 played, but the rook came in anyway. An exchange on e7, the king is in the middle. Well, it's certainly not mate, not yet. However, white can really profit from this. Check, and knight d6. So Wei Yi has managed to find a way through to that sensitive point on f7. Queen d2, Nepo casting around for counterplay. Queen c3, that just shuts the queen right out. So either the queen has to exchange, or if it retreats, then, well, retreating doesn't look very good at all because f7 would fork queen and rook. So Nepo has to exchange. So let's see, what's the material balance? It's actually still even. However, that pawn is under fire. And it's hard to see how black is breaking free here. Nepo played g6. Now, this is a really interesting moment in the game. Perhaps you'd like to have a think. How would you play here if you had white? White to play. And this is where the elegance comes in in this game. White to play. What are you going to do? Cheers. You have a think. I'll have a drink. This pawn can be taken. And you can cash in. You can go bishop f7. You have to play a, a few decent moves. You know, after this, rook e6. And you know, white white should win this one. Okay, it could still get a little bit tricky. Should be good for white. But watch how Wei Yi played. h3. Okay, what's that do? Well, it just takes away a square from the knight. And what exactly is black doing in the meantime? That rook is dominated by the knight. Dare I say it, it is a beautiful octopus knight stretching out into black's position, dominating that rook. The rook just can't get to the open file. And what about the knights? Well, that square has now been taken. These squares have been taken. What about this knight? Well, it can come back here, and that would attack this one. But I dare say that uh, white would very happily capture on f7 and then probably bounce back to e5 with, with more threats. So what exactly can black do? Well, Nepo played a4. And actually, you could take this. Um, I mean, it, it deflects the bishop for a moment. You can also take here. But instead, this is very cool. Where you just played bishop a2. He's just saying, OK, black can do nothing. You can't save this pawn. You know, if you if you shake somehow, uh, it just makes things worse. So a3. Again, it's going to be possible to do this. But there's no harm in waiting. King g2. Now watch this. Nepo plays rook a8. Okay, there's still nothing happening. King f3. This is really cool. Rook a5. Is black doing anything? No. King f4. It's going all the way. The rook came back. King g5. It's it's like a, a Nigel Short king march, except unfortunately there's, there's no mate once the, the king gets to h6. However, once the king reaches here, then it will be possible to cash in. By the way, if king g7, then rook e7 is, is absolutely crushing. So rook d8, and <laughs> Nepo has achieved nothing. He can do nothing. Okay, now, finally, he takes. But what a difference. Instead of the king on g2, it's on g5, and these pawns just fall, 
and Black's king is going to be in huge trouble. So this is what happened. Knight b8. I mean, there's really nothing that Black can do. It's interesting, you know, this pawn stands on a3, but it's going nowhere because of our beautiful long-range bishop. King takes knight. Rook takes knight check. Bishop e6. Everything's, everything's fine. The king is absolutely secure. And what White wants to do now is simply bring the rook round, collect the pawn, and then Black's king is in desperate trouble, apart from the fact that White is so many pawns up. So, for example, a2, you can just bring the king back, hit the rook, and bishop takes two pawns up, winning position. Okay, knight d7 check plate. King takes g6. Still absolutely fine for White. Nepo gets a bit tricky. It's still not very good. Um, if rook takes, then you can, you know, flail around with a2. But actually, there's no drama. Just bring the king back. And in this position... Nepo resigned. Total domination from White's pieces. Really beautiful. Okay, so let's, let's just think exactly why did Black resign here. Well, for example, okay, first of all, the knight is threatened. So let's say knight d7 check. Just step back. Nothing doing. Black's pieces are still miserable. Knight b8, rook a1. You take this one, game over. Okay, what about knight c4? Okay, again, let's just play rook a1. Now, you can't take at the moment. However, after, let's say, king e8. Okay, what is black doing? Let's push the g-pawn. There is absolutely nothing that black can do in this position. I mean, this is a really, really elegant finish by Wei Yi. And, and so cool that he recognised that black is just completely hamstrung here, has nothing to do. And what a fantastic king march all the way to f6 in the end. Brilliant stuff. Well, let's have a look at the standings. Um, four players now on five and a half out of nine. Three players on five, including Wei Yi. It is absolutely wide open. I would say the top eight players... I'm including Nepo on four and a half out of nine. With four rounds to go, any of those players could still win the tournament. Um, there were some crazy games today, really were. Uh, Abdusatorov won. Uh, Marsudlu won. In a, I mean, that was mad. Prague won. Donchenko beat Firuzja, who continues with his total up and down tournament. Round 10 tomorrow. Um, join me again. It's absolutely wild. <laughs> Thanks for watching.